welcome to today's episode so we are looking at question 18 19 and 20 today and this is the fifth episode of our series where we are looking at the august 2022 ecz past paper one exams so if you have if you haven't watched the first four please go back and see the first four how you answer question one through question 17 with tips and explanation so let us look at question 18 18 leads given that y varies directly as x and inversely as the square of z and that y is equal to 10 when x is equal to 32 and z equals 4 find the value of k the constant of variation so Direct variation means the first thing the top part we are saying y varies directly as a constant we are looking for then x. So what it means is when y increases, when y increases, x also increases. That's what the direct variation implies. Then an inverse variation, which one we are saying inversely, it means if you have y k over x what it means is when y increases x reduces or when x increases y reduces okay when x reduces y increases that's what inverse variation means so given that we are told that z varies inversely as x so it's a z square so we are squaring z so this is basically our general equation. Now we need to substitute. When x, so y is equal to 10, basically when x is equal to 32 and z is equal to 4. So z is equal to 4. So, so z is equal to 4, so 4 square. So this tells us 10 is equal to uh, 32k over 4 times 4 is 16. Then we divide there and there we get a 1, then here we get a 2. So this tells us 10 is equal to 2k. So to find k we divide by 2 throughout, so basically k is equal to 5. So k is equal to 5. So basically that's how you, how you answer question A. Then let us move to question B quickly. So question B says we need to find y when x is equal to 20 and z is equal to 5. So using the same formula, so we found now the value of k. So k is equal to 2 to 5. So 5x we substitute over z square. So we are looking for what are we looking for here? We are looking for y. So we say 5 times x. What's the value of x? 20 over what's the value of z? 5. Then we are squaring that 5. Because z is square. So we mean y is equal to 20 times 5 is 100. Divide by 25 which is 5 square. So we are getting basically a 4. So we are getting y to be a 4. Exactly. Then we have question C. So question C is asking us to find z when x is equal to 9 and y is equal to 5. So again we use the same formula here so we have because we already found what k is so we know y is 5 equals uh basically what is x so it's a 5 times x x is 9 then we're looking for z so it's z square so at the end of the day we have z square because it's over 1 so you see multiply by 5 equals 5 times 9 then we divide by 5 we divide by 5 so 5 and 5 cancels these cancels then we remain with z square z square is equal to basically 9 is equal to 9 not 19 then to find z we find the square root of z square root of 9 so the square root of z is z the square root of 9 is basically a, a 3 because it's a positive number so 
z is basically equal to 3 so this is how you deal with question 18 let us move to question 19 question 19 leads solve the equation x to the power 1 over 3 equals 9 so to solve this question you need to bear in mind this principle so the key principle is when you have x 1 to the power a, a, a to the power 1 over x if you multiply this by a number another power this is the same as a we, mot we need to multiply these powers okay this is the principle that we are going to apply so this question is telling us what should be the value of x such that when you find the cube root because uh, if you have 1 over this as the power of a, so this is basically the same as the nth root of a. So, what's the Q in this case is 3, we are saying, what number should we multiply itself uh, what number should we find the cube root of that number in such a way that we get a 9? That's what it implies. So in this case, for us to do that, what we do is, we sort of start, start guessing the numbers, we just solve like this. So x to the power 1 over 3 equals 9. So this one relates it to the power 3, the inverse of 1 over 3. The inverse of 1 over 3 is 3. Then whatever we do to the right hand side should be done, whichever we do to the left hand side should be done to the right hand side. Okay, then we are not changing anything, we are just scaling the function. So, once we multiply, we multiply, 1 over 3 multiplied by 3, we just get 1. So, you get x to the power 1 is equals to, then this one, 9 to the power 3 means we multiply 9 by itself 3 times. So, it's 9 times 9 times 9. So, x is equal to 9 times 9, we are getting this 9 times this 9, we are getting 81. 81 times 9, so 9 times 1 is a 9. 9 times 8 is 72. So we're getting 9 and 729. So 729. So this is our answer, 729. All right. Let us move to part B. So part B, in the answer space below, is an incomplete flowchart for calculating the height of a cylinder given its volume. So we're given the volume and let us complete the flow chart so again let me just clear the board so again we know we need to know how to find the volume so the volume of a cylinder so a volume of a cylinder so if you're talking about uh, basically uh, a cylinder the volume of a cylinder so we are talking about the cylinder. This is a cylinder. So this is basically a cylinder. So this is basically the height. Then we have this is if this is the center, then we have this is the radius. So it's given by the pi r squared times height. Then to find the height given the volume and the radius we need to divide by this side so that we mean with h and this side by that so we get we end up with h is equal to volume over pi r square this is our our formula for height so now before we do that because we are given the volume and the radius so the first step is we need to enter here this number that we are given, we need to enter the volume and the radius. That's the first step. Then the second step, here we need to find the volume using the height using this formula, r squared. So once we do that, then we are done. Okay? So basically, this is uh, the thing that we need to input there. So you need to enter the value of the volume because they are given to volume and the radius. Then you put here this formula then you are okay so basically this is how you answer question 19. so let us move to the question 20. 
So question 20 leads points A and B have coordinates 2, comma, negative 3 and 7, comma, 9 respectively. Find the length of AB. So what we have basically is we have these two points. This is A where we have 2, comma, negative 3. Then we have B which is basically 7, comma, 9. Then we need to find the distance between A and B. So to find the distance between A and B, so generally distance is given by the difference between Y1 and Y2. We square the difference plus X1 minus X, or X2 minus X1, and you square that. Then you find the square root of that. Then when you do that, you basically find the, the distance. So in this case, uh, in this case, this is X2, this is x oh this is y2 this is y1 so y2 so we have basically a 9 minus negative 3 then we, we square that then plus then we have uh basically 7 which is x2 minus 2 then we square that then this is basically b then we need to find the square root of this thing after a square. So 9 minus negative 3 is positive 12. Then we square that. Then plus 7 minus 2 is 5 square 25. Then we find the square root of that. Then we end up with uh, this is 144. Then this is. So this is basically. 144 for to self space so this is basically gives us when you had 144 plus 25 we get 169 so what's the square root of 169 so the square root of 169 is 13 so basically a b is equal to 13 units so because we don't know what units are so it's just 13 units as our length or distance so this is how you answer part A of question 20. Let us move to part B. So let me just clear. So part B is asking us, given that y is equal to, given that y is equal to 4x to the power 3 minus 3x square, then plus 5x, find y dx. So, so y dx basically is saying find the change in y given the change in x so now the principle that we are going to, to to use here is basically if you are given y is equal to x to the power a so dy dx change in y as a result of change in x is given by a multiplied by x to the power a minus 1. So this is the principle that we are going to use on each of these expressions. So given that, let us solve this question. So the power it comes in front, which is 3, then multiply by the original function, which is 4x to the power 3 minus 1, then minus, we go to this part. So the power comes down, so it's a 2, then multiply by uh, basically 3x to the power 2 minus 1 then plus then here the power is a 1 so 1 in front multiply by 5 then x to the power 1 minus 1 so simplifying I think multiply by 4 is a 12 then x then when you simplify this power we get a 2 then minus then 2, 2, 2 multiplied by 3 we're getting a 6 so x to the power 1 because 2 minus 1 is a 1 then uh, plus then 1 times 5 is a 5 then the new power here is a minus the new power here 1 minus 1 is a 0 so we have x to the power 0 so anything less to the power 0 is a 1 so 1 times 5 is a 1 so whether it's m m to the power 0 is a 1 so basically we end up with 12 x square minus 6x 
plus 5 as our final answer on part B. So basically, this is how you answer question 20B. So join us in our last episode where we we'll look at question 21, uh, 22, and 23. Thank you for joining us. Till next time.